This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kicks, Bill. The drippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a country. You're listening to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Silicon, the ambulance update comes your way with what you don't need to know right before we drink and tell us with a shout of the day. Who sucks less is also coming up. And our question today, who attacked who and why? A couple stories. A would-be robber uh, in St. Louis. He attacked a clerk and threatened to use his dog. In the meantime, a neighborly dispute led to one neighbor going over to his neighbor's home. And for armor, he decided to duct tape himself in adult pornography magazines. That's a little something he picked up in his prison days. Right. Man. Went over with two knives in hand, and he was promptly arrested. Our I question. learned it from Terry Crews on Friday. Oh, yeah, good call. Is that what he did? Like I think that's like the third, what's that, Friday after next or next Friday? One of those two. Yeah. Okay. All right, a question. Who attacked who and with what? 844-999-OLA. No go to prison, Miles. You don't watch the right TV shows. <laughs> uh, some comments came in. How you going to protect the- yourself, Miles? Come on, man. You got to watch TV. You know yeah. how to play the game. And you got a very pretty hairline. Oh, look at that pretty Yeah, You can mm-hmm. shave your head so quick. <laughs> Miles, what happened to your hair? Oh. I'm going to jail, man. <laughs> Break my nose, dude. Make me ugly. Uh, so when we first started talking, <laughs> let's be honest. If Miles and I have to go to jail, we got to click up. We can't talk to you anymore. Right, right, I know. Right. Like, hey, my friendship's over, bro. Right. Sorry, mm-hmm. sorry, white boy. Uh, so one of the things we were saying, as far as assault goes, and, and it's only been in the last maybe decade where everything's assault. And like we said, if you get it with a spitball, it's assault. If you pour a glass of water on someone, they charge you with assault. So. Some of comments, they say, this is true. I got a fourth-degree assault for throwing an empty two-liter bottle across a bus, and it happened to hit someone. My question is, why were you throwing an empty two-liter Probably bottle? Probably trying to hit someone else and then accidentally. Oh, just because they were done with it. I mean, you're on the bus. Why are you throwing it anyway? You finish it, you toss it across the bus. That's what we do. Otherwise, they'd have gotten you for littering. I don't understand that, but whatever. And then as far as the question goes, uh, who attacked who and with what? It says, I brought my high school girlfriend home to meet my mom. First thing my mom says to her is, are you using birth control? Ten minutes later, my mother throws a chair at me. Now, despite the wholesome welcome, we stayed together. Been married 20 plus years. Jesus. Mom is bat as crazy as ever. <laughs> Sounds that way. Damn. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a, it's a riveting story. Hello, Brad. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, fellas. Hola. Hola. All right, so uh, this happened about 95. Uh, I was fishing in Alaska. Uh, my job at the time was to sort the fish, and then once we had them sorted by size and got the bycatch out, we'd uh, we'd go ahead and process them. And, uh, in the back, I had some guys helping me. Uh, had this pretty big guy, and then the foreman was watching this uh, this girl, and she was actually pretty hot. And I think this big guy had a crush on her. Um, and what happened was, uh, in order to get some of the fish off, they're pretty large. Like sometimes we'd catch you know, halibut that would be one, two, three hundred pounds, and you kind of have to wrestle them off the boat in the same condition they got on the boat. Couldn't cut them up or anything, and uh, put them in the in the chute to send them out the side of the boat. And I had figured out a way to lock my hands around the tail and pick them up in front of me and just walk over and drop them down the chute. I'm not a very big guy, average five ten, one sixty, whatever, but um, I have some pretty good forearms, so I could hang on to these things. Well, this big guy thought he would grab one of those fish and do the same thing, and he fell down, and he started fumbling around, and he couldn't hang on to it, and the girl started laughing at him. Oh, apparently, apparently he, he he didn't like to be laughed at by, well, really anybody, I don't know, but he grabbed one of those great big pollocks, it just looks like a salmon, but it's all silver, and he, like a haymaker, just pimp slapped her with that fish. Oh, my God, man. Well, that's going to really get his way to her heart. Yeah. Yeah, that, that got him lots of points. Uh, How so bad was I, she damaged? Pardon me? How bad was she damaged? She actually wasn't damaged, but, I mean, uh, you know, put a pretty good welt on the side of her face, left her cheek really red, but she just basically uh, took off running, right? And we kind of got between the two of them. We're like, hey, dude, what the hell? You know, calm down. Well, they decide they're going to fire him immediately, and they lock him in his room. And I don't know what that guy had planned between the time 
that room. We locked him in there, and we got him off the boat in about seven days. But What but are those seven somehow, days like, by the way? Pardon me? What are those seven days like? Because, I mean, you got to feed him, right? I mean, at some point, you got to open the door during that week that you got him locked in there. Right? Yeah. Okay, so when you're in lockdown like that, you can't leave your room until everybody's gone, and then you get to come out and eat. They charge you $135 a day for room and board, and I believe by the time he got off that boat, he owed the company money. Damn. But he did stay in there, well, and there was no more trouble afterward. Oh, no, I did not. I'm not done. No, no. <laughs> so he gets, back to, he gets back to Seattle, and he somehow uses my name to call the company and find out when the boat's going to arrive in Seattle. Oh, no. And then uh, he, he went down there, and I don't know what he was planning, but the cops had, had figured out somehow somebody knew that he was coming after and he was going to do something. I don't know what, but the cops met them at the, when the, when the boat landed, they, they grabbed him and called him away. Did he have wow. anything on him? Yeah, I did. We didn't get to find out because we were stuck on the ship. We just seen all the, we just seen all the cop cars and they wouldn't let us off the boat. No, 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 no. Okay. I, I got to ask you a question. Uh, yeah. how long had you been in sea at this point? Oh, uh, we were probably out at least two months. You're out at sea for two months. Were there any red you, flags you, that this guy well, might here, might do this? Wait, here's the, well, uh, he did share some information with me. Yeah, he uh, he had been to prison like a lot of people that fish in Alaska for. Um, <laughs> You're kidding. Beating up his yeah, beating up his ex girlfriend's boyfriend with a. Uh, uh, okay, so he he drove forty miles to where she worked. He rented a hotel room. He took the towel rack off the bathroom wall and um, took it to where she worked and pummeled this dude. Jesus Christ. Okay. Wow. All right, so you said you're at sea for two months. You come yeah. all the way down the coast. You finally pull into Seattle after all this work, and all you want to do is either get drunk, get laid, mm -hmm. go home, sleep in your own bed, all of whatever those. the deal is. And all you, of those, And you yeah. can't get off your boat because this guy's waiting there. Well, even we're yeah, we can't. Well, we still have to offload the boat. So even once you get there, you still have to get that six hundred and fifty metric tons of fish off the boat before you get the lead. So, what's the uh, what's yeah. the biggest what's the biggest halibut you've ever seen? Oh man, we probably fifteen foot in length, uh, fifteen feet uh, long. Yeah, probably eight eight feet wide, a good foot, maybe more thick. How Wait, old do you, how old crank. do you think how old do you think that halibut is? Oh, you know, we did have a government observer on the boat, and she mentioned something about how old it was, but I, maybe 100 old. years old. So, so, okay, let's assume it's maybe 100 years old, do you think? Yeah, probably. All right, how would that taste? Like, how does 100-year-old meat, because halibut, let's face it, man, it's one of the best fish you can eat. It would eat. still be fresh, I mean, you know. I know that, but I'm still saying it's been alive. Is it like aged cheese? Is yeah, it aged is it, wine? Is it better, or is it worse? Is it? Well, I gotta believe it's better just based on what they do with the sturgeon. I know that you know the bigger, older sturgeon are. They love those eggs. I mean, I would think that. Uh, but I'm a, a six foot inch fillet. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna you have know? the biggest fillet you've ever seen. Sturgeon's delicious too, man. The hell with the I don't eggs. Know if I've had sturgeon. The meat it, itself, it's awesome. It, it is, is so good, and yeah. it's out right now, by the way. All right, you're basically you know. close to eating a dinosaur. As close to eating a dinosaur <laughs> as you could possibly come. I mean, well, something you're fair to I would recommend dinosaur. getting some wine and cheese yeah. and eating a dinosaur. Who yeah. attacked who and with what? 844-999-OLA. I cover mine in capers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the cactus buds, you know. And the bones I give to my hairless cat. <laughs> Meow. Hello, John. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. So, my story goes back to 1989 in November. Let's go back uh, to 1989. It was November 1989, Miles. It was That's a different right. time. Stevie Woodward had higher love. <laughs> and the number one show on TV was Three's Company. Go ahead. So I, so I had just gotten out of school for the Marine Corps, and the, my first duty station was Okinawa, Japan. Oh, that's a hell of a deal. Oh, yeah, it was. It was great. But I'd been there for maybe, I don't know, two weeks, and our company had a party out back behind our barracks, and... Beers flowing because we were able to drink at 18, yada, yada, yada. Well, there were two guys who didn't like each other. One of them was a small little guy who had a big mouth on him, and the other one was a big guy who was just a jerk. Well, we all got drunk. The little guy ended up beating the living tar out of the big guy with his hands. So separate them. Everybody goes to bed. Um, 
The big guy wakes up in the morning and walks into the head and looks in the mirror and sees his face is swollen, blood everywhere, and all we hear is him screaming, who in the F did this? Who did this? And everybody points towards Fallon. So <laughs> he pointed towards his bunk. So King goes and grabs the kid's Kevlar helmet and grabs the mesh net inside it that keeps the helmet off your head. Yeah. Jumps up on the top rack, straddles him, and starts punching him in the face with the Kevlar yelling, Revely and effort. Jesus. Yeah. So it, it, they, by the time we pulled him off him, it had split this kid's lower lip um, three and a half inches from his lower lip down to his chin. Oh, golly. Yeah. So the best part about this whole thing is the King, the big guy, got uh, 30 days in the brig, lost all his rank, pay for a month, uh, extra duty, blah, 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 blah. Well, as soon as he got out of the brig, they put him on the same vehicle. So they had to go everywhere together. Did they become friends after that? Oh, no. Oh, okay. no, no, no. Right. well, sometimes, <laughs> so sometimes it's not like the movies. Yeah, sometimes when you get into a fight, you know what I mean? It's bygones are bygones. It's over with, and now you could just move on. Sometimes. Sometimes. They ended up in fights in the Philippines when we went there. They got in a fight in Hong Kong. I mean, it was those two were just awful. They fought fight their way around, around the world. Yeah, let's say fight around Asia. <laughs> fight around Asia. <laughs> Damn. Hong Kong, not bad. Had a fight there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, great place. Beautiful, man. Great, great. place to Most fight. beautiful fight I've ever had in my mm. life. Yeah, Thailand, Thailand, if you're going to get in a fight, that's the country to do it for. Do it on the beaches, dude. I'm telling you, you get dropped onto the sand, dude, it's fluffy. Rarely connect on the uppercut. That day I did. Our question, who attacked who and with what? 844-999-OLA. Here you are hoping for the happy ending. Yeah, exactly. Did they become friends? Like, oh, no. No, no, they fought, no, their, no, way. No. They fought their way through <laughs> Southeast Asia. Right, like, no, sir. <laughs> no, they, <laughs> they fought the entire time. <laughs> they were committed. Who attacked who and why? 844-999. Ola, hold the line. More of your calls coming up. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. Ola, bitch, Ola. You have entered the men's room. Still to come, an ambulance update right before we drink a toast with a shot of the day with what you don't need to know. Our question today, who attacked who and with what? 844-999-OLA. Uh, Miles, by the way, you were talking, uh, we were talking to the guy who was on uh, fishing in Alaska. Yeah. And we started talking about halibut. He said the, the biggest one he saw was probably over 100 years old. It was 15 what? feet long and 8 feet wide. Right, about a foot thick. And, like, would it taste good? Well, according to some of the comments that came in, it says halibut over 60 pounds starts to get real tough and not real good. Best tasting ones are between 20 to 30 pounders. A few other comments back yeah, that up. I would and agree then, with that. Uh, oh, hang on. It says 100-year-old ha- uh, halibut, it tastes like crap. It's tough, and it has no flavor. Okay. Now you know. Oh, yeah, there was a couple that were like, it should be this size. It did, didn't sound like there was a consensus. No one really went over 30 pounds. All right. They might start a little lighter, but 30 pounds seemed to be the, the target. Mm-hmm. But everyone seemed to agree that 100-year-old halibut, it's not that it's bad. It's just not that not good. good. The only right. thing I would recommend for halibut is a cedar plank and some lemon pepper. Oh. Oh, listen mm-hmm. to you. Just, just, for, steps the, up. just for the mm-hmm. halibut? <laughs> 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 The worst thing is, uh, I say that recipe like I make that. I don't. Yeah. I've had somebody else make it that way, and it was delicious. You can do the same. <laughs> Not that big of a deal. But he won't. Who attacked you and with what? 844-999-OLA. Hello, Matt. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. So this was about 15 years ago, and uh, I was working second shift, and a bunch of friends of mine from high school um, picked me up. We are all going to go up to Seattle. And uh, so we're, I was in Yelm, and so we, we get on the, on the freeway just south of Tacoma, and we're driving north on I-5, and the chick driving goes, oh, the Castle Mega Store, and goes careening off the freeway. And we get there, and I'm like, well, what is it? They're like, well, it's an adult store. And I'm like, well, I've never been in one. So I was like, okay, cool, let's go. And we get inside, and I don't know if you've been there, but it, it's huge. It's like a gymnasium. And it used to be, like, super, like, kind of hood. And, like, it was just, we walk in and... For all your hood sex toys, Mm -hmm. come on down. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Our simulated penises have diseases and everything. And everything, that's right. All the way down to the corner, and then all the way down the long wall. It's just covered in toys. So I'm just, like, beside myself. So I'm, I'm just wandering around staring at everything. And pretty soon... I get a tap on my shoulder, and, and my friend Jeff is with me, and I turn around just in time to realize I'm being clubbed across the face with an 18-inch black rubber marital aid. <laughs> wow. It was 
huge. It was it was like a police baton. It, it, <laughs> it was, was accurate, my friend. And uh, it was this your friend Jeff who was uh, hurling this at you. No, oh, no, he wasn't hurling. He was he had it in his hand. He was beating me like he it was a police baton. <laughs> okay. That's good for the cops uh, to know on the riot patrol. If you look closely, their batons are just giant black marital aids. They they could be, yeah. So I grabbed the first thing in reach, which was another anal marital aid. It was like the size of a Kong, and I threw it at him, and I I grab another, and uh, we we start wailing on each other like dirty, dirty lightsabers. (laughs) And uh, the security guard came over, and he was huge, huge. He just grabbed both of us, threw us to the ground, drug us out of there, and said we weren't allowed to come back. And because neither one of us drove, so we had to sit out there in the parking lot while the girls perused around the Castle Megastore. So we just sat in the parking lot in the hood of the car waiting. Okay. Dirty lightsabers. Mm. I like that. Dirty lightsabers. That would change Star Wars, wouldn't it? it would. I just never thought to pick one up and hit somebody with it. I've never... uh, You know what? Actually, it's crossed my mind. I did see a woman get hit in the face with a, uh, a latex vagina. It wasn't in a fight, but it's just the party had gone on. I think it was a Christmas party, whatever. So someone had bought it as a gag gift. And anyway, so this thing's getting packed. At one point, there's like a blow pop stuck in it. Like, it had made the rounds that night. But this guy throws it across the room. And just as it gets to this doorway, this woman steps into the room. I mean, it timed out perfect. So the thing is, it hit her in the cheek, uh, vagina side out, right? So you just see this giant vagina on her face. But it's kind of like, I don't know, like when a bird hits a window, as you imagine it, like mm. it hit her face, it stuck for a second and slowly slid off. The beauty of this, aside from the fact that it was hilarious, was that this was the boss's wife. Oh. Oh, man. I mean, and it just, it just timed out perfect. This thing hit her in the face and just slowly slid off. And she's like, oh, my God, who would hit me? We're like, a vagina. Who attacked who and with what? 844-999-OLA. Quick side note. We learned in that moment, boss's wife did not have a sense of humor. Not really? even, not even a little bit of one. Why was he throwing it? It was just everyone got drunk, man. It's, you, know, right. you know what I mean? Like just dumb things were happening. Toss it, was, it. Yeah, you're throwing it around. He didn't mean to hit her. She wasn't in the room when it left his hands. She stepped into the room just as it went to the doorway, and she saw nothing funny about that. Hello, Nate. Welcome to the men's room. Yo. Hey. Hola. Hola. Hey. Right, so, um. When I was about 16, I um, was uh, in this shady stuff pretty regularly, like most 16-year-olds. Uh, and I was heading over to my buddy's house, and um, he was currently in an endeavor. You know, he was an entrepreneur. He liked to sell green stuff. But anyways, I got over to his house, and it's like midnight. His folks are sleeping upstairs. And uh, I come in through the basement because his room was in the basement. So I'm like, yo, what's up, Kevin? What are you doing? And he's like, oh, nothing. I'm just uh, bagging this up. And I got um, a guy coming over to get some. And he goes, but look, dude, this guy is like kind of hanging out with shady people at school. <laughs> so what I need you to do is to have my back. And I'm like, oh, yeah, for sure. No problem. What do you want me to do? <laughs> and he pulls the rod out of his closet, the big wood hanger rod. It's <laughs> yeah. like six feet long. And he's like, here, I want you to hide in my driveway with this. And if anything goes down, just come out and help me out. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Sounds kind of weird. I'm like, who are these shady people that this guy's hanging out with? And he's like, you know, we didn't know a term back then, but for lack of a better term, he was like a skinhead prospect. You okay. Know? All right. I got kind of him out of, out of high school. And, uh, <laughs> so, and, uh, where we lived, we were lived in a very uh, mixed neighborhood. So I was like, oh, well, F this stuff. I'm going to get them anyway, maybe. <laughs> and uh, so I'm hiding in the driveway. And they come pulling up. And they drop the dude off. And he gets out of the car. And I'm kind of leaning around the edge of the, the fireplace on the outside of the house. All right. And I'm looking up the driveway. And all of a sudden... Just like my buddy thought, this guy pulls out one of those little, uh, like, uh, telescoping batons. Okay. And is, like, holding it. And I see my buddy going to, like, action stance. And he swings the thing at him and hits him across the hand. I hear him yelling. They hit the ground. So I come running out the driveway. With a six-foot pole. With a (laughs) six-foot pole. 
like some biblical <laughs> character <laughs> drops out of the sky. <laughs> I put it behind my back like a battle axe, and as soon as they roll over and the other dudes on top of my buddy, I swing this thing with all of my might, and it sounded like like a lightsaber sound. You know, it was like <laughs> <laughs> right across the back, and it cracked in half and swung around his head and hit him in the head too. Hit my buddy in the arm as well because they were fighting and rolling around. This dude let out the most high pitched squeal I have ever heard from a male in my life. <laughs> you, you've never been with a man off. intimately. Yeah. <laughs> no, <said> you. <laughs> Anyways. And he goes rolling off of me. My buddy <laughs> wow. said you. I'm yeah, yeah. 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 I bet it's a bunch of dudes, Miles. <laughs> but they didn't scream like this dude. <laughs> I just do it. Maybe I don't have the same impact, you know. But anyways, uh, this, this dude, and he stands up and he's holding his face. And my buddy's like, yeah, yeah, with your bead butt. Man, he's like, get out of here, you bitch. Right? And the dude's like, all of a sudden waves and the car he was in comes like skirting down the street, peeling out and they roll up and it's two skinheads clearly. And he pulls out the double barrel sawed off. Oh, and he's like, yo man, better put that stuff down and give me that weed. And, and, uh, well, you know, my buddy just gives him the bag of weed and is like, yeah, sure. No problem. And I dropped the stick and started running towards the house. And this is his parents' house too. And this is his parents' house, yes, yes. Well, they go rolling down the street, and we see them turn around again, so my buddy freaks out, runs in the house, grabs his dad's hunting double-barrel shotgun. This oh. is not sawed off. So, it, I mean, we're 16. This gun looked like it was as long as the closet pole hole that I was holding, <laughs> right. you know? He was running out of the porch with this thing, swinging it around. They just drive away. All they were doing was turning around. <laughs> And then his parents get up, and we're standing in the front yard with a broken <laughs> closet pole and a shotgun. <laughs> uh, hey, Mr. Jones. What's happening? How, you How are you? Yeah, pretty, much, pretty much. Hey, there. Uh, I'm going to go now. So I left, and, and uh, yeah. So next day, I asked my buddy. I said, hey, man, did you see that dude at school? He said, oh, yeah, whole side of his head is purple. And by the way, so is my arm, you jerk. And, uh, <laughs> I'm surprised you were able to swing that thing as long as it was. Yeah. Too. Oh, dude. I, I don't know. It must have been like adrenaline. I had to go save my buddy, but I got it. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Got the it. fact that it broke was what surprised me. I've been telling that story for years. It always just cracks me up that it actually broke. So now yeah. I want to know how many men you've had sex with that you made scream. <laughs> 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 we'll save that for another yeah, day. Exactly. That's a different topic. <laughs> I love to say it's you. Who attacked who and with what? 844-999-OLA. I made a man most... scream a time or two in bed. Right. I mean, just like the most aggressive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Says you, Miles. Yeah. That's right. Slept with a bunch of dudes. <laughs> I was going to have the same impact. And they liked it. <laughs> right. I think. I was tender. <laughs> I'm a cuddler, man. Right. <laughs> Hello, Jess. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, gentlemen. Hola. So I've got a good one for you. My mom, around the time my little sister was conceived, got caught cheating by my dad. And he confronted her out on the front porch. Big drama. All the how, neighbors wait, wait, watching how old and everything. Are, how old are you when this is happening? I was two and a half. Uh, and okay. how, how, old is your, uh, how old is your little sister? Uh, she was, this is right around when she was conceived. Oh, okay. All right. So there's, so a, quest, know, there's a question of paternity. Uh, well, we didn't know that, but yeah. All right. So um, he, he, you know, calls her out on the front porch, screaming and yelling. Well, she proceeds to go to his 69 Camaro and pull his own baseball bat out of the back of it and start beating him with it on the front porch because he refuses to hit a woman. He goes into the house, locks her out. She's screaming, breaking all the windows on the house and everything with the bat, just going crazy. And he packs a bag and he goes to leave. And before he can get back out, my mom has lit his 67 Camaro on fire. Wow. Yes. She's so we heard this story growing up. And, you know, it was just a thing that was like a funny story. And then That's hilarious. Three, two years later, a guy comes out of the woodwork looking for my sister saying, I think I might be your father. And was he? Uh, we don't know yet. We're still waiting. Wow. So, it, so, so, so this just happened. 
Yeah, yeah. So how long ago, how long, uh, or how much longer do you have to wait, do you think, to find out if this dude is your sister's biological father? It's like six weeks or something. About six right. weeks. And, and did you grow up with your mom? Like, did, were your parents together when you guys were growing up? No, my parents split up uh, shortly after my sister was born. Uh, my mom was bipolar and an alcoholic. She died young, but she was crazy. I mean, crazy, crazy. So lots did, of stuff like that. We had bikers driving cars and driving motorcycles in our living room and all kinds did, of stuff. Uh, did, 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 did the guy, did you get a chance to see the guy? Uh, no, I've never met him. I've just talked to him on the phone. Okay. Uh, Does he seem decent? Yeah. I mean, as far as the conversation yeah. goes? He's, he seems like the nice, a nice enough guy. The thing that's really messed up is that she had him convinced all these years that he was her father, but that my sister didn't want anything to do with him. And he's paid child support to the state of California for, for the 18 years. So that's why he's coming out and, of the woodwork and but, saying, look, I paid for you for 18 years. But your mom uh, still let your little sister know that that your father was her father. Yeah, we always believed that my father was her father, so, and there was never any question is, about is, is that. Is your father still around? Recently. Is your father still around? Yeah, and uh, he remembers everything. When I told him that the guy came out of the woodwork, he goes, oh, yeah, I know who that is. I know exactly who that is. That's from that incident when mom burned down my car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Wow, she got man. caught cheating yeah. and burned down his car. Yep. We call yep. that the double whammy. Are test. you going to wait until the test come back before you determine whether you're going to meet up? Is that how that's going to roll? Yeah, yeah, we're going to wait, find out, and then, you know, if, if he is, then we're going to fly out there and go meet him. And, Where does he live? And do all that. Um, uh, he's in Utah, and my sister's here in Washington. What about, uh, now, how about your father? How does he feel about all this? Because, you know, he raised your sister as his own, as well he should have, but just the idea mm -hmm. that now he might find out that biologically, or does he care? Does it matter? I was really surprised. He actually literally like one tear fell and he goes, honey, you're my kid and I don't care what any test says. So go do it if you got to do it to find out. No, but you know, no matter what, I'm always your dad. Right. He okay. took it right. really well. Yeah. Well, that's see, that's what guys do though. Right? I want you to understand. We, uh, we have like one tear that will give mm -hmm. you. Because that's all. Because if we do more than that, then we become a blubbering mess, right? So we can watch a sad movie. Right. You can have some kind of moment like that, and that tear for dudes. It's kind of like when your nose runs, right? And you get that long hanger out of your mm. nostril, but you can suck it back in. Like we can, when you're not looking, we suck that tear back up to use at a later date. Yeah, like mm -hmm. when people litter. But we don't like to talk. That's the whole thing. All you got to do once a guy, if he sheds a tear, don't speak to him. Right, so you can watch some sad movies. Like, are you crying? It's, like, mm -mm. it's just that one tear, no, man. No, 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 if you say anything, like, no, <laughs> okay. Who attacked who and with what? 844-999-OLA. That is after up, man. Yeah. Wow. I mean, goddamn. Right? Like, he got his ass beat, and then she burned his car. Because she cheated on him, yeah. and then he doesn't know if his daughter and is biologically he... his. And now, 32 years later, here's this guy, you know. And all he wanted to do was leave yeah, without right. any <laughs> confrontation, and he's not going to hit a woman, so... He got what was coming to him, Miles. He did. Hello, Jess. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. Hello. So I got a bar fight story. All right. It happened in Cedro Woolley, about two hours north of Seattle, I think. And uh, me and my friend are walking down the street. We're about 20, 24, 25 years old at the time. And this is a bar that we go to often, and we actually went to high school with the bartender. We've known her for a long time. And uh, there's a guy outside who either one of us has ever seen before, and he's smoking a cigarette. And he's wearing a fedora hat, and he's got a sweater vest on. What is and, up, my uh, brothers? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? I'm sorry. <laughs> Hello there. Don't mind me. I'm just here looking pimp. Exactly. And uh, so we were already thinking he was kind of weird, especially for the town that we were in. And uh, so we, he, he says to us as we're walking in, he, he says that we don't look old enough to be in the bar. And he starts kind of giving us some S, right? And uh, so we ignore him, brush him off. We go inside. We order our pitcher of beer, and we're sitting there. And by the time he finishes his cigarette, he comes in, walks straight up to us, sitting at the bar, and he starts giving us more S, right? And uh, the bartender, like, was away from it. She didn't really see any of it that was going on at the time. And... Uh, so we brush him off again. We go to a different part of the bar, and then the bartender comes over to us and says, what's up with the guy over there saying you guys aren't old enough to be in here? And, and we said, we have no idea. He's been giving us crap ever since we were outside. And so she kicks him out because 
she knows us, known us for a long time, and kicks him out. And so a few minutes later, another guy walks into the bar and he walks up to our table and says, which one of you is talking S to my brother? And my friend goes, we're sitting down at a table at this point, and my friend goes, who's your brother, the uh, S-A-G with the sweater vest on? And before he could almost finish saying that, the guy punched my friend right in the eye and spilled our pitcher of beer. I jump up, put this guy in a, a headlock, like a head hold, and I'm holding on to him. And then my friend, who just got hit, jumps up, goes to hit that guy while I'm holding him, and then, as that happens, I get hit in the ear from the back. The original guy that got kicked out ran back in because he saw what was going on through the window, and he's the one who hit me. So I let go of the one guy, grab that guy. By that time, the bouncer is breaking it up, and uh, they both get banned for however long. I've never seen the guys ever again, but me and my friend got free drinks out of it. Good times. See? There you, there go. you go. The silver lining. That's Who's why I to end with one 844 We've got more of your calls lined up there, ready to go. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. We return to the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. Still to come, the return of Who Sucks Less. Our question today, who attacked who and with what? 844-999-OLA. A uh, quick comment came in. says, I was working for a towing company. I had to do a repo. As I was hooking the car up, I was attacked by a mad Asian woman throwing her baby's used diapers at me. Mm, there you go. Good the, times. That's right. The, the fecal approach. Hello, Jason. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, mi amigos. Hola. Hola. So, uh, so my story happens uh, back in Indiana in 07. And uh, uh, I was dating this girl. She was she was six two, one hundred and eighty pounds. She was a she was a big girl. I'm only five eleven and a half, hundred and sixty five. Did you guys get the looks? Wrestling. Did you guys get the looks yeah. everywhere you went? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we were you know wrestling, and somebody called the police. Police showed up, and in Indiana, if you've been drinking and you step out of your front door, it can legally arrest you for PI. So the cops like come outside, and I'm like no. <laughs> so when I went to go turn around. He grabbed me, and just a knee-jerk reaction, I threw an elbow, and I shattered his jaw. Oh, oh Jesus. God. Uh, oh, yeah, man. Blood started pouring, and I just, I freaked out. So I just took off running. <laughs> and uh, I'm running, and the other cop is chasing me, and I can, I can hear him breathing behind me, and I'm turning around to look at him. And as I turn around to look at him, and I'm running, a, another police car pulls out in front of me. I ran smack into it, knocked me plumb out. And that was the. Uh, Where did you wake that up? Very, that was a very long three years after that. A very long three years. Three years. Yes. Yeah. Got yeah. maxed out on a on a D felony. So you had to spend th- on a police officer. Man, oh man, you had to spend three years in jail. Yes. So I guess yeah. you kind of broke up with your girlfriend that day. No, no, we're still together. We were just wrestling, man. We weren't even doing anything. You know, we were just hanging out. We were still together after that, but yeah, it didn't last long after that. So yeah, but yeah. It was interesting, man. Dang. You know, just one of those fluke things. I would, uh, you know, I just hit him in the right spot. He had a glass jaw. You know? <laughs> Sorry, Your Honor, he had a glass jaw. What do you want me to do? I hit him with manly oh, yeah. elbows, you know. I didn't know his head was made of porcelain. My bad. Oh, boy. Damn, man. Good times. <sighs> I like that he just ran. Mm-hmm. Three years. Who attacked who and with what? 844-999 Ola. I mean, I guess, but I mean, he just broke the jaw of a cop. Like, yeah, I mean, no, he I could stand yeah. there and go, I'm sorry. He's still doing that three years. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Make a run for it with the right. hell. Hello, Morgan. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. 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 So, uh, my story starts at a uh, uh, bar fight down in South America. I was in the Navy at the time. And uh, there was me and uh, two buddies off the ship. Uh, we used to joke around calling the Mitchell brothers. Uh, one guy was pasty white. The other was black as night. And they always hung out, worked out together and everything. So everybody just called them the Mitchell brothers because same last name. All right. But uh, it was the three of us out in a bar. And uh, one of them actually spoke Spanish. Um, the other two of us didn't. So we're hanging out at this bar. And he's chatting up uh, one of the local ladies. 
and uh, it was a sweet little bar that we found. It was kind of like an American themed dive bar where they had like baseball on and they had, you know, soccer, football, stuff like that. But everything looks kind of like what they thought an American country bar should look like. And uh, we're playing pool and everything, the four of us. And all of a sudden, apparently this girl's boyfriend um, comes up and smacks uh, my buddy Mitchell with a beer bottle. Uh, actually hard enough busted thing over his head. We, of course, come to his aid, and uh, the offending guy got a pull cue smacked across the head. And before we know it, it basically turns out to be us versus the bar because, you know, we're obviously not the locals. So uh, there was probably about 15 guys in this bar. Um, me and the Mitchell brothers ended up jumping behind the bar, scared off the little bartender girl that was back there. And we're just grabbing anything and everything we had, hurling it at people. And by the time the... Wait, wait. Hang on. Hang on for us. Hang on. This we're building insane. up to it. <laughs> what happened to you in South America? I know. So about South American bar fight sounds better. Mm-hmm. Hola. The shenanigans continue on the Men's Room Radio Network.